Welcome back to the band guide where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today is the sixth video in the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner's Guide. This video series is going to walk you through everything you need to know from the very first time you open up GarageBand until you export out your finished, mixed, and mastered song. But in addition to this video series, I've also put together all this information in a downloadable guide. There's a link in the description below that you can grab. It's completely free and it's going to walk through everything from the first time you open up GarageBand until you finish your mixed and mastered song. It also so it's shortcuts, it's the gear you need, all of the information that you need to get going in GarageBand. It's completely free from link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. But let's go and get into today's video where we're walking through the smart control window, the library, and the editor window. These three windows are really, really important when you're making music in GarageBand. And it's really important to understand them and why they look different on different tracks. So let's go and get into it. So I've created just a basic session here that has the four types of tracks. If you haven't seen my videos explaining these tracks, you can go back there earlier in this series. But we have a drummer track, Track. We have a guitar track, which is an audio track. We have just a blank audio track, and then we have a software instrument track. And you'll notice as I click through these, the screens on the window change, and that's really important to understand. So let's break that down just a little bit. Let's start by talking about this window on the left. This is our library. So I'm going to close the smart control window at the bottom. Now we're just looking at this library window. First, how we pull it up is with this button up here or with Y on the keyboard. Now our library window is where we pick our different sounds. So it varies depending on which type of track you're on. On a drummer track, at the top you have the drummer select where you can pick which different drummer you wanna have play your parts. Each drummer has a different style that they play. And then in the bottom we can pick the different sounds. So there's different sounding drum kits that you can select depending on what your song calls for and what you just personally like. So that's the library for the drummer track. Let's go down, skip all the way down to the software instrument. So software instrument track, this is where you have all sorts of options here. Uh, you can do anything just about, you can do bass, you can do drums, you can do electronic drums. You can pick out different guitar sounds, keyboard sounds. We've talked about that a bunch already in the software instrument track video, but really the sky's the limit. And this is where you're gonna find all of those sounds is in this library window over here on the left on your software instrument track. Notice if I'm not selected on a software instrument track, I don't see that same window. Same if I'm on a drummer track, so it changes, right? So if you have a software instrument track selected, you'll see all these options over here. Okay, let's talk about the guitar track here. So a guitar track is just an audio track that has some presets set up on it for guitar sounds. So the cool thing with the guitar track is it just automatically pulls up all the different guitar sounds that they've pre-created for you to play around with and use. You can also tweak and customize the sounds and get things that you like a little bit better. I know a lot of people feel limited because they don't necessarily like some of these sounds. A lot of them are great, but if they're not working for you, know that you can customize them as well. Anyway, here you can quickly flip through a whole bunch of different audio sounds, types of sounds for your guitar or for your bass. We have a bunch of presets for bass amps as well right here. So you can find those all in this library over here. The next type of track is our audio track. And here you'll notice that it looks a lot different. We don't have quite as many options. And I'd actually encourage you to not use the library at all for audio tracks. A lot of what they're doing here doesn't it doesn't make sense to me because the reality of presets makes sense if you're you have a preset instrument that GarageBand has created or you have a, a combination of amp setups that GarageBand has created based on their their amp designer they know largely what's going into it but when it comes down to audio it knows nothing about what your audio sounds like so if you have a mic in the real world and you're recording your guitar they don't know what mic you have they don't know how loud you're recording they don't know what type of guitar you're recording what distance they they don't know any thing about what your sound sounds like. So it, any of these settings isn't necessarily going to be good to just make it actually sound good. It's going to make it sound different, which might sound good to you initially. But one thing that I've, after the thousands of people that I've worked with on this channel, it, what I've found is that a lot of people struggle with figuring out where to improve their mixes when they start with these presets. So I encourage you to not use these presets for mixing, for improving your sound, but I do think they can be really great for just effects. So for example, if you go to voice here, there's a telephone vocal effect. This is great for just creating a, a, a very quick telephone effect. In one button, I have a telephone effect on that vocal. That can be really helpful and more or less what you want it to be because a telephone sound is what a telephone sounds like. It doesn't really matter as much what the incoming source material sounds like. And you can still tweak and perfect it on the back end. But when it comes to like dance vocal, that's meant to be a vocal for a dance track. 
but how do they know what microphone and what your voice sounds like and all these things. So I hope you get that point. In general, I would say don't use the library for audio tracks except for effect style tracks. Think telephone vocal, right? Okay, so that's the library window. I'm gonna go ahead and close that with Y on the keyboard. Let's go and open up the smart control window on the bottom down here. So you'll see again, as I go through these, they're gonna look very different depending on which track I'm on. Now there's two sides to the smart control window. There's the right side here and then the left side. On the left side, we'll see, depending on what track we're on, if we're on an audio track, we'll see our recording input. So you can set which input it's recording. So if you have multiple inputs on your interface, you could have mic one, mic two, or your guitar into input one and a mic into input two. You can set that all up here on the recording settings. And then below that we have our plugins and this is where you really process the sound. So for all of your tracks, you'll really be coming back to these plugins a lot throughout the recording and mixing process. This is where you're shaping your sounds. So when you're finding sounds on a bass amp, let's say, this is where you might find, you know, and tweak those settings. Uh, that's going to be in this plugin section here on the left. On an audio track as well, on a software instrument, you might start with very, very little on here, but you could add more effects to process it more as you need to. Similar with drums, you might just have an EQ and compression. Where you really have a lot of variability on the drummer track and the software instrument track is on the right side here. So you see here, this is what it looks like on this electric piano sound on the drummer, we get this little mixer window. So here I can actually vary the volume of different elements of the drum kit. So maybe I want my kick to be super loud. I can turn it up right there. Or maybe I want to take the kick out altogether. I can just turn out this light and that kick is completely gone. Maybe I want to turn the snare up really loud, right? So you can vary these uh, sounds and kind of mix them into your song in a way that makes sense to you on this smart control window on the right side. The software instrument is going to vary a lot depending on which type of sound we're on. So for example, on this electric piano, you'll see I have a few different options over here. I have this drive option. I can drive that up and that's going to add more distortion to this sound. So you can tweak a few variables over there. You can also tweak kind of the tone of it a little bit, just change the way it sounds. So you get a lot of flexibility and adaptability to your sound on this the right side of the smart control window. If I open my library and change this sound, let's say we go to an organ sound, this is going to have a very different setup because I can, you know, pull the draw strings here. I don't know what they're actually called. I don't think draw strings is the right term. But I can pull uh, these and change the tone of that organ and really, really make a very unique sound that's very different very quickly. So the smart control window, the right side of the smart control window is really, really important for your software instrument tracks and your drummer tracks. It really doesn't matter in a lot of ways the right side of the smart control window for audio tracks, guitar tracks, or just regular audio tracks. Those, any variable that you have over here for the most part can be affected over here with a little bit more accuracy and precision. So I can get in this preset here and adapt things a lot better. If you see here, if I turn my gain here, I don't even see which gain it's turning on here. So for example, I don't really understand sometimes what it is adapting in this right side of the window, but I can get in here and get really precise and accurate with things on this actual plugin itself. So. Remember that the left side is where you get the maximum amount of flexibility for most things, but on software instruments and drummers, this is where you can fine tune things is on that right side. Okay, so that's the smart control window. I'm gonna close that window. Now let's bring up our editor window. Again, this is gonna look different depending on which type of track you're on. So on a drummer window, this is where we get to customize the regions and what part the drummer is actually playing. So I can play, like right now it's playing this. I can completely change, let me turn off this click. I can completely change the sound or part that he's playing here. I can also change once I find one that I like, I can change if I wanna have him play on the toms instead or on the cymbals instead or back on the hi-hats. I can change all those variables right there. So this is where you really shape the part that the drummer's playing on the editor window. Again, I can bring that up here with the scissors or with E on the keyboard. Close that library on the side. And then on, let's say, a software instrument track here, you're gonna see a MIDI window that has this piano scroll along the side. Now, this is, if we record a little bit here. So 
So let's say I want to change the way I played this. Like I want all these notes to hit at the exact same time. Then I can take them and put them so they all line up at the start and I can shorten the end if I want. You get a lot of flexibility and you're gonna do that inside the editor window here. So that's the MIDI or software instrument editor window. And then if we have an audio track here, initially you're not gonna see anything on this audio track. So let's just record a little bit of me talking here so that we can see what it looks like on an audio track. It's very different than the drummer or the uh, MIDI track here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We don't need to listen back to that because you literally just heard me say this. But what we can see here is that we can super clearly, if you know, look at this window up here, I can see it much closer, much more zoomed in and detailed down here in the editor window. So let's say, uh, let's say this is a breath and I wanna cut that out. I can go right here and select this region, hit Command T to trim, go right here and hit Command T, and then I can select that and delete it and just clean up. And so I can see more precisely in this editor window on an audio track. So those are your editor windows, your smart control windows, and your library windows for all four different types of tracks. They are different, as you can see. I didn't cover this guitar because it looks exactly the same. If you record a guitar part, it will look like this audio track. It would just be a guitar part. So looks the same, just is on a different track. So fundamentally the same. Okay, before we go, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. One thing at a time.